Podcast. Matt Groves here with some more live coding for you. This is episode 41. We're going to pick up exactly where we left off at episode 40. And we're going to keep working on our user profile, on the user profile for uh, the, the chatbot in this channel. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but you are able to create your own profile, with, which right now doesn't amount to a lot, just a shout out message, but we're also exploring this whole fanfare option. We're going to make that, uh, uh, we're going to make that happen today. Uh, we started on it Tuesday, we're going to make it happen today. It may not look good, but at least be functional. We'll work on the look, look good later. All right, so if you're here hanging out, you've never been here before, check us out for the first time. I like questions. I like discussion. I like it when people are in the chat getting involved and asking questions about anything. Doesn't have to be the current project I'm working on. Doesn't have to be .NET related. Doesn't have to be database related. I can certainly help more with those type of questions, but if you have questions about technology, anything at all, uh, please fire away. Um, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. So please ask away. I am part of the team Live Coders. I'm not wearing my jersey again. I need to need to make it a point to remember to wear this thing on live streams some more. It's such a nice little jersey. Fork04, hello. Thank you for stopping by and checking out the stream. You're the first uh, to pipe into chat today, so welcome. Uh, I'm just introducing my live coding team. 92 strong. We got a lot of people streaming right now. Um, but if you're looking for someone to check out on Twitch, uh, to watch some live coding, some cool technology stuff happening. This is a good place to start, twitch slash team slash live coders. And we will revisit this page later today uh, when we do a raid. When the stream's over, we're going to go raid some, one of our team members, most likely. So a lot of choices right now. We'll see how it goes when it's, when it's raiding time. So check out team live coders. And... Uh, so that's 92 strong, but if you also go to the awesome developers streaming list here on GitHub, this is just a big text file, essentially, of developers who are doing live coding, live streaming, uh, on not just Twitch, not just on the live coders team, but all over the place. So there's a huge list of people doing stuff on Periscope and Facebook and YouTube and whatever else, and all the different topics they're doing, and... Uh, it hasn't been updated since the last time we uh, viewed this, so I'm not going to do my normal search. But you can just do a control F in your browser, type in a keyword. If you're interested in game development, you're interested in Python, you're interested in C Sharp, whatever. Do a, do a search for that, and you're going to find some people who you can follow on Twitch and check out their streams, check out their previous videos. It's GitHub slash BNB slash Awesome Developer Streams. And you can hit a, uh, what is it, uh, uh, bang live coders command or bang awesome dev. I think is the command. And you get bang help, so you get a list of the commands. So you can get you can get a link to these if you'd like to. Bitly slash GrovesTube. So I take all these live streams and I they're saved to Twitch for some period of time. But I also archive them over on YouTube. So if you're watching there on YouTube right now, hello, thank you for watching. Uh, you can hit the like button, leave a comment down there. If you leave a comment with a question, I will be happy to read it on the next live stream. So. You know, maybe I'm not in your time zone, but I'm still doing something you're interested in. I, I still want you to participate. So feel free to leave a comment, uh, and, uh, and I'll, I'll see that, and then I will bring it up on, this, on the stream. But uh, bit.ly slash GrovesTube, you can get the whole history of my live coding streams, some of the gaming stuff I do, and other videos there on, on GrovesTube. That's everything. I did want to show this to you here. And, uh, you know, I don't normally promote every single Couchbase blog that I write. Um, I do work for Couchbase as a developer advocate. One of the things I do a lot is I write blog posts, technical blog posts for Couchbase. And this one is ASP.NET Core Microservices. It's a guide to getting started. Now, for those of you who are not brand new to the stream, this should seem relatively familiar. And that's because I basically just kind of built this blog post uh, out of the work that I did on the stream and you all helped me to do on the stream. So uh, we use Visual Studio, we use Docker Compose, uh, we used ASP.NET Core, we did some configuration and some deployment with that. And actually I'm running right now, running the chatbot locally, uh, running it in a ASP.NET Core microservice much like this. And uh, yeah, there's David Neal's uh, cool little tweet here with the microservices bike. But at the end here, I wanted to point this out 
It wasn't it wasn't just uh, in the chat. I also got some help from Brant Burnett, who typically doesn't hang out in the chat. But uh, Calvin and others who have been in the stream, uh, I wanted to shout you all out uh, as helping me out with this blog post. So this one is definitely one. If you if you watch the stream, you're probably familiar with all this stuff that's going on in here. But um, this is a good reference for you. And if you're new to the stream, this is a post that kind of walks you through the process of creating a very simple microservice in Visual Studio with ASP.NET Core, and which uses a database. We're using the uh, uh, database per service pattern here in microservices. And so the Docker Compose file is also spinning up the database for you. And then ultimately, you want to deploy this probably with Kubernetes to AKS or something. That's, that's something I'm working on right now. That'll probably be the next blog post, the follow-up post to this is, okay, I've got a microservice. Now, how do I get it out to AKS? And that will probably be a much shorter post. Um, but uh, go through a lot of the stuff here with using Docker, configuration, uh, all this kind of stuff. Hey, MHMD Aziz, thank you for stopping by. And you have a question for someone with relational database background. Do you know any resources to get into NoSQL database mindset? Yes, uh, I absolutely do. Um, so I would definitely recommend you check out my uh, my videos in the past, a bit.ly slash groves too. Um, so I have probably, a, a, I have a huge amount of resources to, to help you with that. Um, one thing I'd recommend checking out is uh, if you want to go to, let's see, ooh, where to start is the question. Um, Wow, it's that, so it's such it's such a tough question to answer because now it's just like, well, you want to get into the NoSQL database mindset. Where do you start? So one of the things I, I like to, uh, I mean, if you just want to get started, right, there's there's plenty of, of resources for that. You could go to docs.couchbase, for instance, and there's some tutorials here, and there's some different uh, tools for, for getting started using a session store uh, or, or things like that. That's a great place to go. Um, so if you just want to do a Hello World application, that might be a good place to start is the, is the docs. One thing I like to talk about is, uh, is data modeling is kind of the main difference for me. Um, that's the, one of the toughest things I had to uh, get through when I first started with NoSQL. So I wrote this blog post a while ago called JSON Data Modeling for RDBMS Users. And this kind of lays out the basics of when to normalize, when to denormalize your data, and, and, and some rules of thumb to going through that process. So that's another place I'd recommend starting out there. Um, but I, you know, I guess I'm, I'm more interested in hearing from you, Aziz, and you know, what have you uh, looked at so far, and uh, where do you, uh, you know, what, what do you want to get into the NoSQL database mindset for? And what are your biggest stumbling blocks for, um, for, for getting into that mindset? Uh, I also also like to make it clear that some people are like, oh, you should always use NoSQL or you should always use relational. I'm a, I think you should use the best tool for the job. Um, so I'm I'm not going to say you should just completely forget relational. Um, they, they, there's tools that have their places. Fork has a question: Couchbase versus Influx DB, pros and cons. Okay, um, so I can tell you a lot about uh, Couchbase. Uh, Influx is not one I've spent much time with, but I can get a quick. Oh, this is a time series database. Okay. Okay, very interesting. Um, so, yeah, time series is a, is a very specialized type of database. Um, I would say if you're really into time series types of data, um, one of the things, this is one of the areas that Couchbase has been a little bit weak at in the past because it's, it's, it's very much a JSON-based document database, right? But in the current beta version of Couchbase, 6.5, I think it's in the beta version. I can double check to be sure. Aziz, I see your other questions there. I'll get to you in just a second. I love it that you guys are asking me questions. It's fantastic. Um, uh, what, what I'm looking for is, uh, okay, I'm looking for beta, beta stuff. Right now it's in beta. And I think, um, is that we've got some, yes, here it is. This is in beta right now, 6.5. We've added a bunch of windowing functions and common table expressions that are going to allow you to create more time series oriented queries. 
So I still necessarily wouldn't consider Couchbase a time series database, uh, but you can certainly perform a lot of time series type of queries with windowing functions and common table expressions. That's in beta 6.5 right now. All right, Aziz, uh, data modeling is exactly where I struggle. I tend to think in a very relational way. You're not alone in that, Aziz. That's very common. In fact, uh, my boss is working on a, uh, a webinar, a, a, a sort of live presentation uh, about this very thing, about how to kind of just take the plunge and uh, get from relational into NoSQL. And uh, he's, he's got some, he's got some uh, interesting ideas about that approach you can, you can take by just sort of forklifting your data over and starting there. Instead of, you know, my approach in the past has been, okay, let's first think about the model and how we're going to normalize, et cetera, et cetera. And his, his approach is, is, I think, a valid one, is a lot more just let's jump in and get started and we can transform as we go. That's coming up uh, soon. To be honest, I don't have much experience. I'm just interested and want to start using them to where it makes sense. Seems like a useful tool in your tool set. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, data modeling is, is something you got to think about um, because you have a lot more options with data modeling, a lot more flexibility and uh, compared to relational. So um, that's, you're asking the right questions, I think. Uh, but if, you know, if you have some places, if you're going to explore Couchbase, for instance, and there's other ones out there, but if you're going to explore Couchbase and you get to a point where, oh, hey, this isn't uh, going how I expect, or hey, I'm a little confused here. I really, really, really want to capture that, uh, and I want to get that feedback from you. That would be extremely helpful, uh, Aziz. Uh, so anything, and I, I, I like to, in turn, help you to try to get past those barriers. So anything you come across in your journey, please uh, let me know. You can uh, contact me uh, here on Twitch, of course. I'm also on Twitter, M M Groves, and uh, um, I, I used to throw my email address up here sometimes. But you can you can also email me um, that sort of stuff. To any anything you want to do to contact me, let me know. I am all ears. It is really is is my job is to listen to developers and uh, take take your feedback to try to improve Couchbase and improve our material. So I appreciate you stopping in and asking those questions. Uh, all right, what else we got? Yes, the microservices. All right, so TwitchBot is currently on, and um, I don't know what the current project is, uh, but you can hit uh, bang current project to get that. I believe it's probably still in the microservices, so I may have to change that one here uh, shortly. Um, okay, and another thing I want to talk about is the C Sharp Advent. So if you are into, I'm really into C Sharp. I, I, it's my favorite programming language. If you're into C Sharp like I am, you need to know about the C Sharp Advent because there are only a few spots left to sign up. Right now there are still six spots open. So really there's only five spots because I'm taking, I'm taking the last one of those spots. But these are a chance for you to write a blog post or you know, create some content about C Sharp. Uh, pick a day the day you're going to post that content, and that content links back to this main page. And what we end up with uh, on Christmas Day is we end up with 50 pieces of really great C-sharp content from all over the community, and everybody gets lots of traffic out of this. It's a great way to launch your blog or to revitalize your blog or just to get your name out there or, or try to give back to the community. Uh, this has been really good. This is the third time we've done it. Uh, so we've got, we're running out of time here. It's, it's, uh, it's, we're about a week into November. Uh, you see your name. Oh, yeah, that's you, Muhammad Aziz. Okay, well, terrific. You already know about this. Uh, cool. So thank you very much for signing up. And there you go. Uh, this, is, uh, this is you. So you're already on Twitter. So you definitely uh, are aware of me. You can feel free to contact me with anything, uh, any of those uh, questions you have as you uh, go through your journey there. So yes, looking forward to your post on the 21st. But uh, right now there's five other slots out there. So uh, sign up while you have the chance. And uh, csadvent.christmas is the short version of that. That, was, that is courtesy of Calvin Allen who created that URL. Okay, so let's get on to uh, the coding for the day. And what we're going to work on is taking the fanfare feature and we're going to make it a little more data driven. Right now it's just kind of hard coded into JavaScript and I've got like a Boolean flag in the profile, but I'd rather put the actual, um, all the fanfare info in the actual profile itself 
and make it easier for me to manage that and edit that. Uh, instead of having to redeploy the application or recompile it every time, I want to make a fanfare change. So if you're not familiar with the fanfare is, um, I'm probably going to set it off as I do this. But uh, the, the first time, for a certain subset of users, for um, certain subscribers or regulars or mods, uh, this is like a, a sort of a, a privilege for them, is they will get a little like uh, fanfare, a little entrance video when they first chat in the stream uh, for, you know, for the first time in, in some period of time. So this is going to trigger me because I, I have a test one. It's going to play a, a little video, I, I, if, this, if this works, when, as soon as I uh, chat something. So let's see what happens here. And hopefully this isn't going to cause any copyright problems. Yep, so that's, that's the idea, and then for, it's a different video for each, each person that has this privilege. Uh, I do want to go ahead and set the current project. We're going to switch this over to the chatbot. And the chatbot is actually up there on GitHub. Uh, right here. So we're going to go ahead and set that project, and there we go. Okay, so then if I bring up the chatbot. This is kind of how we were working on it last time. If I bring it up here, it was uh, profile, Matthew D. Groves. This is the really ugly, uh, not even close to complete version of the form to edit a person's profile. So there's Matthew D. Groves has a profile, and I think Calvin A. Allen has one, so I can edit his, and his shout out message is this, uh, and so on. So uh, just sort of a basic form that I can see the profile info and make changes to it. And this, uh, I do want to expose some methods for people to make changes in the chat room itself, but the fanfare is a little more complicated, so that's something I'm going to have to uh, enter into a form. It, it could be, you know, a group activity to do this, but it's something that uh, you know I need to actually enter data into a form for. So uh, we started by looking at uh, this. Uh, we can look at, I call it Twitcher profile, is the data model. So to kind of get into data modeling Aziz a little bit, uh, one of the things that you kind of have to get used to in the NoSQL mindset is that your NoSQL database is not going to enforce the shape of your data or restrict, depending on how you look at it, the shape of your data uh, like a relational database will. So you have a little bit more responsibility in your application. Some databases do offer kind of some database level validation um, but that's not really the same thing as a schema or as, as, a, as a relation. Uh, so uh, you still have to have some responsibility in your application to kind of take care of the modeling yourself. And so here's a, this is a model of the user profile. And this has been one of the cool things about NoSQL is that this has been changing and, uh, and I'm making changes to it all the time just here in C Sharp. I don't have to go and make changes in uh, the actual couch base itself. So I get more power of flexibility. Of course, I get more responsibility. Um, so this is the fanfare, and the fanfare basically is yes or no, is it enabled? Uh, what's the YouTube video for that, the, the little YouTube code? The start time and the end time in the video, right? We're not gonna play an entire video. It may just be a snippet in the middle of a video. An actual message that shows on the bottom of the screen, as you might have seen over there, a little toast that comes up with a, with a hype message. And then a timeout that says, okay, after the time uh, elapses, we'll go ahead and, and close off the screen. Uh, fork, no problem. Uh, with, the in, with the influx answer, it, it, I don't, it's not a great answer. I'm sorry, because I don't know much about influx. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Speaking of hype, there's, uh, there's Calvin. What's going on, Calvin? How are you? <laughs> uh, Calvin is actually the inspiration for this fanfare, is, is the... We thought we'd play a norm clip every time Calvin shows up. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy that, Calvin. Fantastic after then intro. <laughs> what is, I'm not sure, but I'm glad I'm glad you like that one. Fantastic after that intro. Yes, <laughs> great. I'm glad you're here, Calvin. I'm working on the fanfare thing, and I want you to see this incredible um, uh, HTML page that I'm creating here so far. Uh, we haven't added any sort of styling, probably throw bootstrap on or something later, but, uh, I want to be able to edit that fanfare. So if you want to change it to a different video clip, different period of time, change your hype message, that sort of stuff. 
we can do that. So let's, so this, we're looking at the model, and so the fanfare is kind of a, a nested object inside that model. Just add Bootstrap and Font Awesome, and you're done. That's the, that's the developer approach, right? Just throw it all up there, and I hope it looks good, right? But uh, it's not, not a bad idea. <laughs> we'll get there. Let's get, let's get it functional first. So we've got, uh, let's close all but this. This is our profile. And this is what the data is going to look like in Couchbase, in JSON form anyway. And this is sort of the C-sharp version of it. Um, so what I've got is uh, I've got a form that I've created here in, a, in the controller. So this is something we're going to maybe do some auto mapper for later. In fact, maybe put a note here. Auto mapper. Or, or at least... Uh, you know, refactor to to an extension, you know, extension method or constructor, something like that, because this is just going to you know potentially get bigger and bigger if we add more stuff to the profile. Um, so we need to figure that out. So we're we're creating a profile. When I go to this page the first time, it's going to create a profile if it doesn't exist. At the very least, a profile is going to be your Twitch name, and that's pretty much it. Uh, and then we're going to get that profile and spit it out to this profile editor page. This is some old school server-side HTML rendering. I'm not doing any, any sort of React or Angular or anything like that, uh, at least not yet. I mean, we probably won't need to get there. So I was building this form last time. The form is going to have all the different things of a user profile that I want to display and some things I may even want to allow editing for. So the shout out message, for instance, you can see this up here. My shout-out message is, hey, it's me. And Calvin's shout-out message is, Calvin is the greatest. So if I just shout it out, Calvin, S-O, Calvin A. Allen, you'll see that uh, it does exactly that. It shows that message and links to Calvin's stream. Oh, he's also a Twitch streamer. We were just streaming last night on our podcast, .NET Bytes, which is another extra-long episode thanks to the uh, Microsoft Ignite conference. Uh, but the other thing is the fanfare message. Currently, it's not showing Calvin's because it's not currently in the database. It's, as I said, hard-coded into JavaScript. So look right here. This is Calvin's height message. It just says Calvin, kind of like Norm. And uh, everything else is hard-coded. So I want to get this stuff out of JavaScript and put it into the database. That's what I'm working on. So let's uh, let's keep going. Uh, let's call this one fanfare preview. We'll get to that eventually. Okay, so we've got the fanfare message, and uh, maybe a fanfare enabled. That probably would make sense to be a checkbox up here. M dot fanfare enabled, and. Um, the way that labels work with checkboxes is they usually go after, right? Label for m dot fanfare enabled, and that's just going to say um, enabled. Okay, and because I'm running in Docker, I guess when I make a change here, it doesn't show up to immediately in the browser. And there may be something I can enable to do that. Um, but let's go to Calvin. So now we see enabled. So now it's sort of run together. That's not great. We could wrap it in a div, maybe. This is where Bootstrap might come into play to uh, make this look a little better. And put the shallow message in there as well. Okay, so better, but uh, we can certainly do better when we bring in uh, Bootstrap or whatever framework. Okay, so we've got a uh, checkbox for enabled. We've got the fanfare message, um, which actually that should be a. Now uh, it's. So this is, hmm. Yeah, I probably want this to be 
a nullable boolean there. Because it, it may it may not be it may not be set yet. Uh, so I can probably hmm cannot implicitly convert boolean to explicit conversion cast. So could I could I do this here? Um just like that. Yep, I think that'll work. So it defaults to false if it's not set, which which kind of makes sense. And hopefully that'll work. Okay, fanfare message is here. YouTube code. Do that in your model, bro. Do what in the model? You're saying, uh, oh, where is the model at? All right, cheer. Where in the model would I do that? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Make that non-nullable. Yep. Okay. With ya. In your mapping. In the mapping. Oh, I see what you're saying. Do the coalescing. Okay. Like that. Uh, well. Except this is, this is nullable. This should be nullable then, right? Something along those lines. Okay, that's fine. All right. I'm okay with that because that moves, we don't need that kind of logic here in the UI. Um, okay, and YouTube code. So then YouTube code is going to be very similar to this, but it'll just be YouTube, YouTube code. I don't know what they call it, if they have a name for those. No, it's testable. <laughs> YouTube video code, I don't know. Whatever those are, um, it's the little, you know, random letters that identify your YouTube video. Okay, YouTube start time. Oh, no, it's fanfare YouTube start time over here. Um, start time, and that's in seconds. Um, text box four. Can I define? Can I define if this is a number? I think I can, right? What's, what is format? No, I think I just want, um, no, wait. It's, it's not a text box, it's a number. This isn't a huge deal if, uh, if there's not a helper for it. Because I can always add some validation, but there's like input type equals number instead of input type equals text. There's an input of type text value to, okay. Well, well not a big deal. And then fanfare YouTube end time. This is also a number of seconds. Okay. And we got message and timeouts. There's also going to be a number. And this is going to be milliseconds. Just to make things more complicated. BRB need afternoon coffee. Uh, bro, I can't even drink coffee in the afternoons. I will be unable to sleep. Okay, and anything else in the profile? I think that's it. We shout out message. And the username is, of course, the key of the document, so that's already in there. And all this fanfare stuff. And then what else is stored in the document is, is type equals user. And that's a detail that's hidden away. It's something I you know, don't want a user to be able to change. 
So that looks good to me. Okay. So, uh, what's all these squigglies? Okay, fine. So now we have a post. And this is going to be the same exact route, just, ex uh, just a post instead. I probably do need... Well, uh, maybe not. No, nope, maybe not, because I'll just be in the URL. So we'll say task, I, action, result, profile, editor, and uh, this will be the, uh, I don't know, let's call this post. And we'll say from query, what? Replace property with methods code refactoring has been disabled. Okay, I don't know what that is. From query, Twitch username. Ah! Why did it tab everything? Oh, it should be string. My gosh. Ah, delicious. Get some delicious coffee. And, whoa! What is happening? I feel like this is ReSharper stuff blowing up on me. I don't know what's going on. From body, we're going to get the profile editor view model. Now, um, in some situations, you may want the view model and the actual object that's posting the form to be different objects. I'm just going to start by keeping them the same until we need to change or I suddenly remember why uh, it's a problem to do it that way. What does it like about this? Oh. I don't have any weight in there yet. And nothing's returning. Okay, fine. Okay, so uh, one of the things we can do is we can say if model state whoa, dot is is not valid, and just just kick us right back out to that form. Which means we could put some um, validation on here, right? Oh, this Twitch username. Why is that? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Shout message. So none of this stuff is really required except for, I mean, this checkbox is required, right? But unchecked checkbox, how do you, how do you really validate that? So none of this is required yet. Really, um, although some of the things, uh, as as I said, I mean, if it's posting into an integer, it's got to be integer. So, hmm. No, let's leave it. I think we'll leave it there for now. That's probably good. Okay. So now we're going to mediator dot send, and we're going to do a new update profile and we're going to pass in the form for that so I'm going to need a new update profile request in the core over here Up, update profile this is going to be a request it's going to be a command so it's not going to anything and we will put the constructor in there that's not going to work because that class is in the UI. Who all in the chat watching him code? Huh? What, is that, what does that mean? Uh, am I doing something wrong? Um, or are you just curious? Uh, okay, so this is a problem here because how do I take this view model and sort of give it to this. Um, again, we could probably use AutoMapper here, right? Quest equals new update profile. Uh, not that I've used AutoMapper yet. Oh. oh, I see why you're asking, Calvin. Well, thank you very much for that uh, gift subscription. I appreciate that, Calvin. Given Fork04, who uh, just showed up. He was the first one today. Uh, Fork04 is the first one to show up today. The first one to say something in the chat. 
Bing bada boom. And thank you for the follow, Forco4. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, okay, and so we're going to update the profile. So I've got to do all the mapping here on the left hand, right hand stuff. But then after that, we send the request off and we're going to just redirect to action. Um, Redirect to action, is that fine? We redirect to URL. Uh, just back to profile slash uh, Twitch username. And uh, we'll maybe go back to a, like a home page or a dashboard at some point in the future, but well, now we'll just send them back to the Back to the form, we want to keep making changes. Okay, so mapping is kind of the opposite of this stuff right here. Request.twitch username equals Twitch username. Like so. And request.shout message equals form.shout message. And um, we can say if form.shout message, oh no, form.fanfare enabled. Uh, no, 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 no. No, we don't need to do that. We just say request dot um, fanfare enabled plus form dot fanfare enabled. So I'm going to keep it flat for now. I think. Oh, Calvin, thank you for the subscription. You know, I think I need to subscribe to you. I think I, I got an email the other day that it was canceled. So I need to go back and do that. But I haven't seen you stream for a while outside the outside the podcast. Calvin says, wait, I was already subbed. <laughs> uh, oh. Were you? Is it a little icon next to you for subbed? I don't know. Anyway, I appreciate it. Uh, okay, so fanfare enabled. And we can, again, go default to false here. Oh, except that's... That's always going to be true or false, I guess. So that's fine. Fanfare message. Form. So I can really just do a little bit of... Uh, no, I guess I can't do a little bit of cheating here. That's what I was thinking. A little copy and paste cheating. I've still been on a streaming hiatus to get my groove back in check. Get your groove back in check. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But I'm excited to learn more about it. How Calvin got his groove back. Just about being completely burnt out and everything. Okay. That's cool, man. No big deal. Um, here's the thing, though. With... Start time, end time. So if I am editing a profile and they don't have fanfare, uh, then I, I'm i not going to enter a start time or an end time. So these should be nullable. I'm not going to enter a timeout. All those things. And so I, I should expect those things to be 
nullable as well in the request. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Maybe, we'll see how that goes. All right, now let's go over to create a request handler. Okay, so update profile handler, update profile handler. You know, this might just be, if I'm gonna make this more generic, we could, we could make this a dictionary instead. Would that, would that make sense? Would that work? Or like an expando object? Because essentially there's no reason for me to set in my database a fanfare timeout of null. This doesn't, this doesn't give me anything other than, you know, it could just be easily just be missing too. I don't, it doesn't need to be there. Mm -hmm. I don't know, let's uh, let's let's get going here with the with the user handler. Oh, doesn't like this either. I broke something. Fanfare timeout. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think these I think this models this profile editor view model this should be nullable too. Yeah, I think that should be the case. All right, uh over to our user no, um profile update profile handler. Okay. This is going to be an i request handler of update profile. Why doesn't it like this? Huh? Is it I request handler? Yeah, I request handler. Did I spell oh I, sp I spelled it wrong. Handler. There we go. Implement those members. Okay. So Hmm. Just trying to think about this, trying not to be too complicated, but also don't want to store a bunch of nulls for no good reason. So there is a concept in Couchbase called a sub document. And what I think I want to do is use that. Uh, so let's make this async. And uh, so we're going to need Couchbase. And I bucket, I Twitch bucket provider, Twitch bucket provider, bucket equals Twitch bucket provider dot get bucket. Okay. So we're going to say bucket dot, um, is it mutate in Twitcher? Twitcher profile, and the actual key is request dot twitch username. And so what that returns is, it's kind of what is it called? It's called a, uh, a mute, mutate in builder. So this is a builder. So we can say if request dot um, shout message. If we can say if that actually is there, then command, um, we're going to upsert, and the path itself is shout, shout message, is that correct? It's probably lowercase like this, right? With request.shout message. So 
command equals command.upstart, something like that. And at the end, I say command.executes async. So what this does is it will go through the actual update requests that have come through and say, okay, is there actually something in there? Or am I just going to be storing a null? If I'm storing a null, then don't bother. And so maybe this is a lot of extra work for not much gain. Um, but I'm going to then say, okay, if there's something in shout message, okay, actually store shout message. Otherwise, leave it in the state that it's in. And this is why I think it might be good to have this instead of being an, a, a profile, maybe I instead make it a dictionary. Uh, but I don't know, I'm, I'm worried that I'm, just, I'm overthinking this. Um, so we can say if um, request dot fanfare enabled, and once again, well, I, I think always storing fanfare enabled is probably fine. Um, if request, uh, so always store fanfare enabled, I'm okay with that. Command.upsert, and we put in a path here. Now, um, I, th I think how this works is you just use dot notation. And I want to make sure I'm building this correctly. Is that? So normally I would chain these together, right? Dot upsert, you know, whatever, like this. Do a bunch of those, and at the end, let's say dot execute. But I, I want to put conditional logic around these. So I think I think that's right. Okay. All right, and uh, we're going to return uh, default here. All right. So right now this is just going to store the fanfare and the shout message. What else is there? Uh, the fanfare message. We're doing the same sort of thing here. Upserts. And this is fanfare.message. Like so. And etc. And this is this is as I keep doing this, you're going to kind of see why I think it's better to put it in a dictionary. Or maybe there's a way to turn this into a dictionary. I don't know. Uh, fanfare timeouts. Uh, oh no, fanfare timeout is not a string. Like so. Oh, something suspicious happening here. My local network. I have a device called a circle. Um, that manages uh, network and, and the, for, for the kids' devices, it, it uh, you know, prevents them from going to, it limits the websites they can go to, limits the time they can spend on the internet, something like that. But it also notifies us when new devices are added to the network, and it just said a Roku was added to the network, and we haven't bought a new Roku uh, recently. So either someone's attempting to add a Roku to our network somehow, or maybe Roku made a system update that, I don't know, changes the MAC address or something. I don't know. Just kind of curious. Someone out there hacking me? Y'all hacking me? Okay, fanfare, timeout. Um, what else we got? Um, YouTube start, well, YouTube code. Is there back, well, okay. YouTube start time. I call this was YouTube start time. Ah, what happened there? YouTube start time. Uh, 
And similar for YouTube end time. And uh, one, I'm, I'm just thinking about validation. And one thing I do need to validate is if you're entering fanfare, you can't enter partial stuff. You can't enter just a timeout. That's not going to be valid, right? And he's, he does all these things in here. So we do need to have some validation here. Uh, it's either all or nothing. I'm really just, I expect only be the only person that uses this for now. Yeah, I may give uh, mods access to it in the future, but I'm, I'm, I'm preventing my own self from entering invalid data, which uh, seems kind of silly, but uh, at the same time, what I'm doing here is also just sharing this with you, so you can also understand my thought process and maybe make suggestions or think, oh, I never thought about it like that, that sort of stuff. Okay, uh, so we got... Uh, uh, shout message, fanfare, timeouts, start, and uh, so there's four fanfare there. We have we have six total. Am I missing all the code? I call that? I just call it a YouTube code. Okay, that's good. One, two, three, four, five, and then enabled, which is six up here. Okay. All right, well, let's just kind of see how it works. Um, see if this does what I expect it to or not. Okay. Okay, the bot's ready. Bring up Calvin here. Okay, and so there's my lovely form for Calvin. What I want to do is I want to look at Calvin's actual data. Just to see if this works how I expect it to. Right, Alan. Bring up his profile. And so right now, his document just has this. Right, so the, that fanfare subject sub is not even in there. I just have this has fanfare, which I'm eventually going to go away. Um, so what I expect to do is if I put in uh, a message like this, let's see if this even works. Yeah, I got, a, I got an error. So I don't know if it's reaching that or not. Okay, so it didn't even reach the database. Let's see where the error might be. Could be a binding error. Who knows what? Hit the save button there. Hmm. What? What is going on here? What's error 415? Um. What is that error? Unsupported media type. Yeah. What's the unsupported media type? Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Please add bootstrap. My eyes are burning. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, this is this is uh, you know this is what you get with uh, with a back end developer like myself. It's it's uh, it's not going to be beautiful. We'll get there eventually. I want to get the functionality working. That's that's uh, that's important. My eyes are burning too. Yeah, <laughs> that's a different reason. I was uh, working late last night, actually, on a uh, top secret project. Um, that's why I'm uh, maybe a little 
a little bit uh, a little bit bleary eyed. And also my mind is already thinking about this two weeks of travel coming up for uh, QCon and CubeCon. Make two trips out to the West Coast in the next two weeks. Okay. Um, hmm. So it looks like we're not even getting here. Like the debugger's not even hitting this. Oh, wait, did I not have a breakpoint set? <laughs> that would explain why. Nope, so it's not even getting there. So I'm doing something fundamentally wrong. Um, with, uh, oh, is it? Begin form. Do I need, does it need to be a begin form setting here? Form method post. You have actually have your form posting? Yeah. yeah maybe I wasn't. <laughs> that might explain it. It, is the default for begin form? Is it is it get? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, not sure. Good question. Yeah, I don't know either. It's, it's, it, feels like, it feels like it's been so long since I've done this. Usually, I'm just like a rest endpoints, creating rest endpoints, or uh, you know stuff like that these days. I haven't done this in a while. One Kevin Griffin, yes, he is in the house. What's up? How's it going, Kevin? Thank you for not lurking. Doc say post is default. Okay, well then doesn't explain what's going on. So I'm sure Kevin's gonna see this and be like, oh, you idiot. Obviously the 415 is caused by this and that. Enter lurk mode. Oh man. Help me out here, Kevin. What am I doing wrong? Just standard ASP.NET MVC. I got a, a basic form, as basic as can be, posting to this, hopefully this endpoint here. And for whatever reason, I'm getting a 415 error message. I don't know what I'm doing. I've done this a million times. Why am I still failing at it? Import type submit. That makes, that makes all sense there. Begin form post. Here's the controller. It's a post endpoint. I'm getting this from the query. And this from the body. It is not directed to the right action since it has a different name, but the this is the URL right here. It should be the same exact URL. This this method shouldn't make any difference. This method name. 14 uh, and the server refused to accept the request because the payload format unsupported format. Right. That yeah. Just theorizing, man. Gosh. <laughs> sorry, Calvin. Sorry. Didn't mean to get so hostile. Let me just look at the network here. Oh, it redirected. It, so it, re it did redirect. Check the browser dev tools. Uh, what happened? Preserve log. Preserve log. Okay, we're going to preserve that log. Okay, so it posted here. Uh, uh, okay, so it posted a form. See, there's the form with, with the fields I'd expect to be in there. And it's content type what? Content type form encoded. Okay. From body is expecting JSON. Oh. Uh, why was, okay. Hmm? See, that's maybe the problem, because I'm, I'm so used to working with JSON. If I take this off, you think it'll just interpret to pull that from the form? Uh, it's worth a shot. Maybe? Jeez Louise, I don't feel so bad now, because I know Kevin Griffin has... Way more experience than me in doing this kind of stuff, and uh, uh, and he's even he's writing question marks. <laughs> Calvin. Okay, well, different error message, <laughs> so we're making progress. All right. Uh, value cannot be null. Parameter key. 
Oh, what? Uh, okay, so that's probably happening where? In, the, in this handler? Did it make any changes to the data first? Let's just take a look. It looks like no. When a parameter has a from body, Web API uses content type header to select a formatter. In this example, the content type is JSON. The request bodies are all JSON, not a JSON object. Okay. So is from body simply for Web API, and I'm doing it wrong because I'm using MVC? I'm because I'm doing form posts. That's for Web API, so maybe not the same. But it says uses the content type to do it. That makes sense. Uh, okay, I don't know. But I think I'm past it. So we're into the handler. So we're making progress. The request is getting the data that I expect it to. So we're good. Is there from from? From from. <laughs> Sorry, I read it wrong. I thought you said from from. Is there from form? I don't recall. Uh, I don't know. I don't know either. I've never, I don't think I've ever used from form before. From form from. That's, that's a lot. Okay. Absurd. Twitch username is null. Okay. That's why that is failing. Oh. Let me fix this. Okay. Uh, it says in here, I need to. Oh, it's not pulling the Twitch username from the query. So from query isn't working either. So let me see. Is there from form? There is a from form. Gosh. But this, the from query isn't working now. It's giving me a null. Uh, we'll see if from form works. I just like saying from form. From URI. Oh, from URI. Nope. From uh, Kevin Griss says wait. Wait. Do I not even need this in there at all? Don't use from query. <laughs> so I'm just doing too much. <laughs> That's expecting query string. Oh, yep, you're right. It's not query string. It's actually part of the, yeah, the route or whatever. Is there a from route? There is a from route. From route, from form, from, from, from. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. I'll do the buggy mode just to make sure. I don't think you need to decorate that parameter. Well, you know, if it works, then it's okay to be a little extra explicit. I'm okay with that. If it's causing problems, then obviously that's not good. All right, hit save, breakpoint. It's populated this time. All right, and so is this. Okay, we're in good shape. Let's go to the handler. Yay. Yes, thank you very much, Kevin. Now you can go back to lurking if you want to. Okay, so that should work. Okay, that should work. Bang lurk. Okay. Kevin is the greatest. Yep. So that's, that's set. So that's going to do that. This does not have a value. So it's going to skip that. Skip, skip, skip. Let's see if that works. And return defaults. And... Retrieve docs. It works exactly how I wanted it to. Tremendous. Okay. So uh, once again, the couch based stuff, I totally got that down. It's just the ASP net stuff that keeps biting me. Okay. Great. Okay. So then the question becomes, is there a better way to do this? Um, because uh, what's off? <laughs> off. Um... You know, I can see if I start adding more stuff to the profile in the future, I got to keep adding these if statements, these if wrappers. It would be better if, maybe better if this was some sort of collection and I add things to the collection from the form and then I can do all this in a collection. Maybe premature refactoring, premature optimization here. It works for now. So next thing you need to do is some validation. Now, one of the things you can do with validation in ASP.NET is you can put um, decorators on here. And you can say, okay, the such and such is required. And such and such needs to be in a certain range and things like that. One thing, at least you couldn't do the last time I was checking this with a, with a built-in decorator, is you can't apply uh, validation logic to multiple fields and say these all must be set or these all must be 
blank, that sort of thing. Uh, so what I could do is I could um, just, um, I don't know, we could do something like form.validate. This is what we used to do back in the day, Calvin. You remember this, form.validate model state. Create a validate function on the actual uh, on the actual model and put some logic in here. And we could say uh, if fanfare enabled, then it must be the case that um, if uh, not fanfare YouTube start time um, has value, then model state uh, add model error uh, saying that uh, YouTube start time, state time, start time is required. And similarly, fanfare YouTube end time, YouTube end time is required. If it's not the case that uh, fanfare message, well, if it's not the case, if string is null or empty, fanfare message, then fanfare message is required. And you, I think you can see where this is going. It's not the case that fanfare timeout has value, then model state, add model error. And fair timeout is required. Probably could also put negative value checks. The Bill Semph checks on here. Uh, we're not going to get too carried away. Um, let's see. Uh, code. If string dot is null or empty. Fanfare YouTube code. Then model state dot add model error. Um, fanfare YouTube code is required. Okay. Okay, and so let's just say um, I want to show those error messages to the form. Oh, jeepers. Do you remember how to do this one, Calvin or Kevin? Show them errors, model state errors on the form. I thought there was a helper for it. HTML dot display. There is. Calvin says there is. He's frantically Googling it right now or browsing his own local source code. Validation summary. Yes, there we go. That's right. Look at this guy. Uh, exclude property errors. No, we don't exclude property errors. And uh, you just, just have a little errors message there, like that. Something like that, yes. Excellent, thank you, Cal uh, thank you, Kevin. I think you might deserve a fanfare of your own, Kevin, after your help today. Uh, so if I hit save here, I should get it, well, it's showing errors. Calvin, Kelvin, Calvin, Kevin, we're all the same, we're all, we're all good. Both have VINs. Okay, it's not giving me errors. Why is it not giving me errors? Oh, because I didn't put the check <laughs> before or after the validation. Heavens to Betsy. Sorry, pardon my language. Oh, it's still not showing it up there. Hmm. Looks like it didn't even add them. Did I do it wrong here? 
save. Let's go into validate. Oh, yeah, the checkbox is enabled. So it's not going to do the validation because I'm not saying turn it on. So there we go. And now it should show the messages. There we go. Perfect. Thank you, Fork. Appreciate that. Okay. Ha! <laughs> if Fork just wants me to get on with it so I can change this over to Bootstrap and it won't look uh, so horrible. <laughs> okay, great. So we've got some really simple validation. We've got a form. Uh, so if I were to go and basically migrate Calvin over here, this is his YouTube code right here. Okay, and start time is 2.17. And the end time is 2.20. And the timeout is 6,000. Oh, is it because I stopped? I stopped it. I had debug mode and I stopped it. Don't panic. It's going to work. What's going on out there? Did you all just hear that? Oh, I got into this again. Okay, timeout, 6,000. YouTube code. Uh, start 217, end 220. Okay, enabled. Okay, and this errors. I don't... Why is it showing errors all the time? That seems kind of annoying. Shouldn't it only show errors like when there's actually errors? Okay, I'll take that off. Okay, so now if we look at Calvin's profile, see all the stuff we need there to, to, to show that fanfare is present. And so then I can, when the fanfare happens, I can push this up to JavaScript via SignalR uh, and I won't have to hard code that stuff on the JavaScript side. I'll just send all this stuff up to the, the web browser. So that means in the future, if I want to add or change a fanfare for a person, I don't have to redeploy the app. I don't have to uh, write any JavaScript to that. I'll just throw some data in here or you know, use this form that I created and, and do it right here on the screen. And we can build a preview for this as well. Okay, so there we go. That's that is uh, a, a we're getting you know we started with a very simple user profile weeks and weeks ago. We're actually adding some substance to this profile beyond just uh, your name and a, a shout out message. Which, by the way, this should work now. If I want to shout out Calvin, I can change this. Let's change the casing on here just to show you, and then I'm going to shout out Calvin. Look at that. It's completely data-driven now. Very cool. So let's go ahead and fix this. By the way, that's something that there's already a command for Calvin to change himself via a, a chat command if he wants to do that. I'll just do it again just to show this. There we go. Data-driven user profile in the chatbot. Okay, we're in good shape. Now, let's think about refactoring some of this mess. We've got this huge wall of mapping code here, this huge wall of mapping code here. Um, let's at least think about taking this out of um, the, the controller method. Uh, so we could just, for instance, we could start with um, just a map method. In here, that just simply does that exactly. Oh, I forgot about the username too. Um, put your profile. So the profile doesn't have a username? 
Oh, it's, yeah, it's got to. It's the it's the key, but uh, do I not include that in the profile itself? No, I don't include it in the profile itself. Okay, that's fine. I may want to do something like that. Should be a string. Okay, so I've just moved some of that mapping code into this map method here. Um, you know, I could now go into this map and I could replace this with auto mapper if I wanted to. And do the same thing down here. Request dot map um, Twitch username and form. Oh, not going to work. So this is, yeah, that's not going to work because this, um, this update profile lives in the core project. And so the core project does not itself know about the UI project. Only the UI project refers to the core project. This is a place where Automapper might be useful. Um, because we're mapping between two different assemblies. So I don't know, what any, any thoughts on Automapper out there? Anybody uh, a regular Automapper user? Is it, is it, is the, uh, to use a, a couch base ism, is the juice worth the squeeze at this point or should we, uh, should we wait until it becomes painful to do this. I prefer this. Oh, okay. Fine. Fair enough. No likey magic. You don't like you don't like the magic of Automapper. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, that's, uh, that's not right. Okay, what about, how do you feel about uh, um, unit tests on controllers, Calvin? Um, trying to keep these real thin and simple. But I feel like um, this, is, this is enough to have to make it worthwhile to write a unit test for. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, I think I want to take a short break. I'm getting a little thirsty myself, and uh, I don't have a drink down here with me. So, uh, also, the lighting looks kind of bad. What about, what about that? Is that better? Uh, no, not really. I have to, I have to fuss with the uh, chroma key again. It's that big old picture window is the main problem. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go on a quick break here. I'm going to get myself a beverage, and I'll come back, and uh, we'll decide what we're going to do for the rest of the stream here in terms of this feature. We could do bootstrap stuff just to, just to make Fork04 uh, happy and stop burning his eyes, uh, or her. I don't know. I don't know if you're. A, I don't know who you are, Fork. Um, but we shall take a short break. So I'm going to switch over to that scene right now and I will be back in you know, maybe you know less than five minutes
All right, I'm back. I've got a nice cold glass of ice water here. Okay. Let's have a let's have a quick look at um, what what uh, the code I've written so far here today, and maybe that will give us some ideas of where to go with some unit testing. All right, so here's what I've got so far. Ignore this Kubernetes stuff. That's just something I've been experimenting with. I showed that on the last stream, I think. But uh, right here, we've got... A, oh, you know, we've got these handlers. I don't think I created any unit tests for those handlers, so we probably need to get those tested for sure. And um, request, there's not much to those. So I think we need at least... We probably need three handler tests unit tests and probably two controller unit tests. Uh, so why don't we just uh, start with the handlers. Okay, so we've got, uh, we've got uh, one of them is the git profile handler. Not much to this one. Um, so this should be a pretty quick one to write. Uh, okay, over to tests and core and request handler tests. We're going to do git profile handler tests. In unit foe life. Sync task. Okay, so really there's not much to test here because we're going to mock out Couchbase. So all we're testing is that it takes the username from the request and passes that off to Git Sync and returns the value from Git Sync. So that's, um, I don't know, I, could, I guess that could be really, it's really just two tests, I guess. Um, uh, profile is looked up, I don't know, by Twitch username. Okay, we do our range act assert and the handler. We'll do our wait handler. Don't have handler, so we'll set that up up here. Handler equals new get profile handler, which takes in the mock bucket provider getting kind of tired of writing that, so that might be something refactor at some point too. Mock bucket provider is new mock of i twitch bucket provider. I don't know we're going to use that, but then we have um, yes, yeah, so mock bucket provider set up the get buckets operation. That's going to return the mock bucket the mock bucket is a new mock of i bucket uh, oh this is a dot object all right so await handler handle and then this is the request the Cancellation token none. So we need to arrange the request. Oops. Is new get profile. Huh? Oh, uh, and then username. Username is doesn't matter. Uh, we'll we'll put fork's username in there. We're going to immortalize into my source code fork. Get profile username. Okay, and then we're just testing that the profile is looked up by Twitch username. So we're going to uh, bucket.verify that the m.get async twitcher profile is being looked up by the username. And that happens exactly once. Oops. And once again, I have to enable the live coding. There's got to be a way to have that always turn on. Hmm. 
<laughs> Gonna take a second to warm up. Oh, and we've got some red X's. Why do we have red X's? I don't like that. I don't like red X's. Oh, great. My Nick. <laughs> yes, your name is what caused the red X's. I'm going to blame you. We'll use Resharper here to debug through this. see what the problem is. Really sorry. <laughs> Apology accepted, Fork. Let's just not let this happen again, okay? So we go debugging through here. What is the problem? Fork 04. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. That's what it is. I need to do one more range. Mockbucket.setup m m dot Get a sync of Twitter profile. Uh, it dot is any string. Don't really care. That's going to return. Returns async. Uh, one of my fakes. Fake operation result. Where the value is. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, new Twitter profile. For this test, I don't think it matters. Now we should get green. Okay, we do. Okay, so the profile is looked up by a Twitch username. What an amazing test that is. Yes, Calvin. You going to MVP Summit? Uh, as far as I know, yes. It's not been... Oh, well, first of all, maybe we shouldn't even be talking about this. Uh, it might be under NDA. Uh, I, I, uh, I, the dates have not been officially announced yet, Calvin. Uh, but I, I have approval from my employer to go. For the third year in a row, I have approval. So I am planning on going to them to be some of, whenever they get around to announcing those dates in a public place. You gotta, you gotta learn, Calvin. I know you're new to the MVP game, but you gotta learn the whole NDA thing. They take it very, very seriously. Oh, dates have been announced. Well, so is what I know. Registration is not open. Some info is public. Yes. I, you know, it just got me jumpy because, you know, MVP is an NDA and they take it uh, very seriously. And uh, when you go to the summit, you're going to see the NDA being taken very seriously. And that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> One time, so I was actually, uh, no, I'm, you know what? I'm not even going to say it. Because I don't want to get NDA, I don't want to get this happen again. So I'm not going to say it. I'll tell you over a drink sometime, Calvin. <laughs> yes. They got me, they got me worried. But uh, no, it's totally, it's, it's totally understandable. Because they, there's some very cool stuff that you get to see in, in the MVP program. Um, that uh, they don't want out to the public yet. So it's, uh, it's a privilege that should not be abused. And so I'm not going to push the envelope. Uh, and you notice Kevin Griffin has clammed up because now he's real nervous too. We're, we're probably already on, on a list. <laughs> okay, other thing I want to test is that what? What do we want to test? That it returns that value from, I don't know, is that really worth testing? Returns a profile that gets from this. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, well, that's really worth testing. So I'll just call that enough for that one. The other one is, what was the other handler? It was profile controller. We'll just go look. It was the create profile if not exists. Create profile of not exist tests. Okay, public async task. Create profile if not exist handler. So this has a little bit more logic to it, not a ton. Um, so we're going to see, test if the profile exists, 
that um, it does not upsert, right? So if profile doesn't exist, then upsert doesn't happen. Okay, range. I should make this into a auto hotkey or something. Range act assert. Uh, we've got our handler equals new. Create profile if not exist handler. Again with the bucket provider. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Everybody quick. Get get to the uh, get to the emotes. Defend the channel with Calvin's bada bing bada boom. Welcome! Welcome CLW! Thank you for the raid, I appreciate it. Glad you're all here, checking out what we're doing. We're just writing some unit tests right now. We, we did some, a little bit more exciting stuff uh, earlier, uh, a little more exciting, um, with uh, we're creating a, a form to help manage our user profile, but now we gotta test it. We gotta eat our vegetables, so we're writing some unit tests. Fire extinguisher, hello, thank you for stopping in. And CLW, great to see you. Appreciate the raid. A fellow team member, by the way, Live Coders team. Thank you. Thank you for the follow. I see you. I see you. Thank you for the follow. Love it. Glad you're all here. Checking out some C-sharp unit tests. Writing them in N unit. Uh, Code Warrior. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Uh, what is this one? Oh, this is just Copper Beardy's uh, emote. Is that is that you, or do you do like I do and use someone else's face in your emotes? <laughs> Entity Adam, Entity Adam, you got a founder badge. You've been around here before. The Bandit Dave. Wow, this is quite a raid. This is going great. Appreciate you all stopping by. We're having some fun here. I saw that you're streaming earlier. We were we were checking out the uh, the Twitch Live Coders team. Saw you on the list. A lot of people streaming right now. And uh, we'll probably look at that list again in maybe half an hour. We're going to raid someone else on the team, and we'll, we'll go from there. So thanks, thanks everyone, for, for uh, hanging out, and uh, feel free to ask questions about what's going on, anything at all. Yeah, there's always one of us online. Yeah. The sun never goes down on the live coder's empire. Yes, there's always somebody. Okay, so let's get back to it. We are, uh, we've got a handler set up, so we need to create a mock for that. I'm using, uh, a, um, I'm using Couchbase here for my database, and so we're, we don't want to actually hit the database in our unit test, so I'm going to mock out some of the SDK stuff for Couchbase. I'm using the mock framework here, and I have a Twitch bucket provider. That's a named bucket class, so I've got that. And then we'll set up the bucket provider with mock to return, when we say get bucket, it's going to return the actual bucket. And the bucket is uh, bucket object. The bucket is the object. Uh, a bucket is a collection of documents. Oh, that's not right. Okay. A uh, bucket is a collection of documents in Couchbase. So if we want to interact with those documents in some way, read, write, query, update those documents, we need a bucket object in C sharp. So that's what I'm doing here. I bucket. Okay. So this this is kind of all the mocking I need uh, to inject into this handler. This is a mediator handler, mediator. I don't know how you say it. Uh, to handle the create profile if it doesn't exist, handler. So uh, every one of you in the chat right now potentially could create a user profile. Uh, in my chatbot system. And uh, there's lots of things that user, well, not lots of things, there's a few things right now that we're stored in user profile for you and you can add some customizations and things like that. That's that's sort of the goal, is to you to customize your experience here in the live coding with Matt Grove's channel, Musical Bookworm. That's a cool name, Musical Bookworm, I like it. Thank you for the follow. Okay. So we've got act, we're going to handle, this is going to be in a wait, handle dot, handle dot handle, and request, and no cancellation token for our test. Request is a new, create profile not, not exists, 
And username, let's see. Well, I used Fork's username last time. Let's use Musical Bookworm's name this time. Musical Bookworm. Your name will now be immortalized in my unit tests. So we're going to we're going to create a mock profile for Musical Bookworm in our user test, user tests. Uh, and actually, we're going to assume you already have a profile. So we need to set up the mock uh, to say that m dot exists async uh, your username, a document with that key exists. It's going to return true. So if we go through our code, we'll, the first we'll check to see is that Twitch username exist. If they do exist, then this bailout. We're not going to do anything. We're not going to execute the upsearch. So that's our verify. We're going to do a mock bucket dot verify that m dot upsert async uh, doesn't matter what it is is any document of was this uh, Twitter profile doesn't matter what it is. Upsert is never called times dot never. All right, and pass. All right, good. So we've kind of tested the negative there. Let's test the other way around it. Public async task. If profile does exist. Oh wait, no, hang on. This is, this is wrong. If profile does exist, then upsert doesn't happen. If profile doesn't exist, then upsert does happen. So we're going to be kind of similar here with the arrange and the act. The assert will be a little different um, because what we need is basically we need to figure out how to verify that this is the data being passed to the upsert async. And all all this is going to do is create a very bare bones profile. Um, so it's just a username and like a, just an empty profile object, which is not as empty as it looks, but um, for our purposes, it's, it's for our testing purposes, it's empty. Okay, so we're going to mock bucket dot verify that m dot upsert async. Uh, it is document of type twitcher profile and let's move this down here where what where x dot id equals username and x dot content um, not equals null I guess and we got a failed test oh, why is that so let's move these down here a little more readable. What is the fail all about? Upsert async, new documents. Mm hmm. Oh, because does not exist. Boom, green, passing test. Okay, and look at all this coverage. Oh, tremendous. Look at all that great, great test coverage. This is Visual Studio live testing that does all this running the test for us automatically. I don't always use uh, Visual Studio run tests. I use ReSharper to run specific tests and to debug into them and, um, and so on. But I do like this live coding feature. It's great for unit tests. Okay, so we've got those covered. Well, we've got about 15 minutes left. Do you think we can get a controller action unit test going it can be a little bit more involved we'll see don't run your functional UI test through it ha yes yes this is one of the first things I, I experimented with with the Visual Studio uh, live testing is you, it's great for unit tests but I don't want it running my integration tests all the time because that's what it's doing it's running those tests all the time I don't want them doing that because that'll be hitting the database hitting a service, that, that kind of stuff. Well, we can at least start creating a unit test for uh, a controller uh, and see how it goes. So we'll do a, um, let's see, we'll call this, um, the way I structure this 
is in the test, I'll go create a folder called controllers, maybe. And then I'll create another folder called profile controller tests. And then I'll create a class called, I'll create a class per action. I'll call this one profile editor. Profile editor tests. This might be a chance to explore one of those uh, those projects of the week, Calvin, the uh, ASP.NET MVC user test extensions. Don't really have enough time today to do that, so maybe in the future. But uh, what I want to do is we're going to again do a setup because I am down with N unit for life. Uh, public. And should these be async? What? Yeah, these are async. Okay. Async task. And I just want to see that... Um, that... Um, oh, I don't know. That uh, will... We'll, um, controller will send... Create profile if not exists. Quest to mediator. Okay, so we need to have a controller equals new profile controller why is it not referenced already? Oh, so it'd be the first time I've actually uh, created a test for the actual web project. Okay, interesting. Okay, and this needs what? This needs a mediator, so we're gonna mock mediator. Mock mediator is a new mock of I mediator. Oh, what's happening? Alrighty, so range, act, and assert. The act is going to be our controller dot profile editor and it'll be some username. Username doesn't matter. And it looks like you're gonna be at Copper Beardy. We're gonna put you in the unit test. Copper Beardy. And uh, wait, so we don't need to we don't actually care about the response for this test. This needs to be dot object. Okay, uh, so all we're testing is that it sends off this request. That's really all. That's really it. So uh, we just want to verify mock mediator dot verify that x dot send. It is a git profile. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. no, create profile if not exists. Create profile if not exists, where x dot twitch username equals username. And what doesn't it like about this? Oh, optional arguments. Oh, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. Cancellation token dot none. Mm, takes two arguments. Hmm? What are we talking about? Is this be is any? What doesn't like about my arguments? It is, right? Yeah, that should be right. This is create profile if not exists, right, create profile not exists, and we want to see that the username, is, oh, oh, because I'm, I'm reusing x here, oof, okay, uh, I guess, we'll, y, I don't know, no, it still doesn't like it, What is the problem here? Ambiguous invocation.
because there's two different sends. That doesn't make any sense. What am I doing wrong here? I just I mean I could just say where verify x dot send. Uh, it is any create profile now exists. It is any oh oh is it need to be cancellation token? Oh, that's what it is. Instead of cancellation token, it needs to be it is any cancellation token. I, well, that doesn't doesn't quite make sense either. Verify, huh? Huh? Oh, X, yeah, X arrow. No, no, that's still not it. What what is the problem here? Only assignment call increment to why oh there's a statement. Uh, this doesn't need to be it is any. There should be cancellation token dot none. Double out oh, yep. Mm-hmm. So that works. What why can't I put a condition in here? Oh, uh it it is yeah. Is that what I was doing? <laughs> oh no, I think it's just okay. I think it's just parentheses problems here. There we go. Okay. Good old parentheses. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is. This should do the trick. It doesn't seem to be though. It might be bombing out somewhere else in the controller. Brian Lagunas, what's up? Bang left doesn't work, but uh, oh, yeah, bang left should work. Uh, unless my uh, chatbot is not running because I'm working on it right now. Yeah, that's one of the downsides. Yeah, I broke it. It's one of the downsides of having it run locally. I need to get it out to AKS. It's on my to-do list. What's going on, Brian Lagunas? Thanks for stopping in. The problem here is that this is bombing because... I really only want to test this part, but it, it continues to go on and then it bombs out here. So it bombs out here because what? Because this Twitter profile is probably null. The Twitter profile comes out of this here. So I could probably arrange this in the setup, maybe. I don't know. Mock mediator dot setup m dot send uh, it is any uh, get profile cancellation token none um, returns async new twitcher profile okay now Pass. Got it. All right. That's what I do, Brian, here. I, I, I break stuff here, Brian. That's what I'm best at. I like to break things. I don't like to break things. I just do break things. I'm a clumsy, clumsy guy. All right. So I got the test. It's going to check to see that to control. I heard that about you. <laughs> uh, you know, we were talking about the MVP program, and suddenly Brian Laguna shows up because he's, a, he's one of the operatives. You got to watch it, Calvin. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so we'll... So here's here's something about... Check your email, Matthew. Uh-oh. What am I checking my email for? <laughs> Are you joking with me? Or <laughs> I'm actually checking my email right now. I'm seeing a bunch of follows on Twitch. That's good. Uh, nothing else so far. I think you're just messing with me, Calvin. So here's one of the things about code coverage that they don't tell you in code coverage school. I assume that exists. Is my whole action here, according to live uh, live testing, is covered. All this code is covered. Technically, that's true. But I know that my test only really covers just this part. So it's an, another reason why you shouldn't look at the code coverage number alone as something to strive for because it's, you know, it's relatively, uh, I mean, I'm going to say easy, but getting 100% code coverage doesn't necessarily mean your code is 100% covered. I haven't tested any of this stuff down here yet. I mean, I've exercised the code, but I haven't actually done any assertions against it. So that's something to always keep in mind when you're thinking about code coverage. It's not the end-all, be-all. It's, it's a helpful heuristic, helpful guideline, but it's not in itself the end, uh, the end goal. So I think that's probably enough for today. Uh, this, this is actually pretty painless to uh, mock up this controller and start testing it. Well, that's a good thing. Of course, I'm not using any, anything crazy like HTTP context or anything like that in here. When we get to this view, I might have to do a little bit of gymnastics, but not a big deal. But I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, let's switch over to the Twitch Live Coders team and see who else is streaming. And maybe we'll do a little raid. We got a lot of people streaming today. My goodness. A lot of people in channels. A lot of people streaming. Ah, you know, I feel like I raid the Michael Jolly a lot. So maybe we'll pass on him today. You need to learn how to raid. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, you know, I was, uh, it's basically just slash raid and the name of somebody to raid. That's all it really is to it. And then, I don't know, there's like emotes and you can have your bots do all kinds of raiding stuff. Let's see who else is uh, out there. What are they doing? Uh, more Lua scripts here. You raid code rushed. So I have raid, uh, please watch the language though, Brian. I have raided him in the past, but it's been a while, I think. Um, who else? Who else we got here? Adrian Hall, Go Cobra Viper. We got Z Zeratar, Zerator. I think Code Rush. I'll go on your suggestion there, Brian. And thank you very much for joining me, everybody. And uh, we're going to go raid here shortly. Uh, please be nice to Code Rushed. And uh, if you're a subscriber, make sure to hit that uh, Calvin Bada Bing Bada Boom emoji when you get over there. And I'm going to not be streaming for a while. I'm going to be traveling for two weeks. So I won't be doing any streaming on the road. Uh, but I'll be back after that, most likely. And we'll pick up where we left off there. In the meantime, make sure to check out the Twitch Live Coders team. Twitch.tv slash team slash Live Coders. Lots of people on there, including Code Rushed. We're going to raid right now. Thanks, everybody, for the follows. Thank you, CLW, for the raid. I uh, hope you all have a, a good day.